if it wasn't God, or where would I be? I shall know my blessing, and there is no stressing, I live in this peace. Yeah, yeah, fly in the globe, all over the sea. I see many faces, but too many places that we never be. Well, look, man, we back again with another banger, man. Last time we did, uh, I think it's like her trip to Japan. But look, man, if you're watching on YouTube, man, go ahead and subscribe, like, leave a comment down below. If you also come follow the trips, man, we're lit. We're having a good vibe out here. We're chilling. Yeah. Come join us, man. But let's get into the video. We're wasting no time. Let's get it. Remember when Pokemon sent me every single one of their Gen 5 sitting cuties for me to rank? Turns out they really liked that video. So much, in fact, that they said, Hey Jaden, awesome video. Why don't you come to Japan to watch the Pokemon 2023 World Championships? Our treat. You won't have to pay for your flights or hotel or nothing. I've been to Japan once before in my entire life, and it was back in 2018 with my family. We did a bunch of fun little Japanese tourist things, it was a phenomenal trip, but ever since then I've always wanted to go back and do all the awesome nerdy stuff Japan has to offer that I didn't want to bother my family with. At the time they didn't even know who Luffy was, they would have been so lost. So when Pokemon extended their hand and offered to fly not only me, but Jacob out to attend the biggest Pokemon tournament in the world, I jumped for joy. Free trip to Japan! The tournament was was only going on for a single weekend, but Jacob and I planned to stay there for three whole weeks to do a bunch of said extra nerdy stuff. We were pumped. Eventually the time came, Jacob and I were packing up all our stuff, and decided we both would bring an extra suitcase so we could treat ourselves a bit and buy a bunch of cool stuff while we're there. Don't judge us, we're anime and Nintendo loving impulse buyers going to Japan. A game plan was needed. We were being responsible. Two extra suitcases was definitely gonna be enough. Oh, really? Yep. Equipped with our extra luggage, we headed off to the airport. Pokemon straight up gave us business class seats. We didn't ask for them or anything. Like the one thing I'm very impressed about her animation is the fact that she makes the animation herself. Y'all told me that, you know what I'm saying? Like, that is very impressive. Like, pro W, for real, no cap. So when we and boarded... The storytelling... We she just too good at it. We realized we had the seats where you could lay down. There even was some sort of seat divider that acted like a car window so I could roll it down and bother Jacob whenever I wanted. Quick little 11 an hour flight later and we were in Japan. It was time to have the best trip of our lives. I'm, I'm not joking, I had the most incredible trip and got to do things I won't ever forget. And I, I won't, because I've now plastered it onto the internet forever. We landed midday oh, Japan yeah, time, yeah. so we decided to go to the first thing we wanted to see while abroad. It's a problem, you should go to Japan. Now, that's, that's, that's something in my bucket list, man. Me and my woman, we plan to go to Japan, because, like, there's so much shit we want to see. Like, the Naruto stuff, like, they got the Naruto train, like, like, rail, whatever, all that shit. I want to see that. You know what I'm saying? But that would be lit. Japanese McDonald's. I couldn't order anything except fries, but Jacob and I both dropped our jaws when we saw something called the Double Big Mac on the menu. That's I thought cool. Americans already went big with the Big Mac, but Japan did the impossible. Just to send a message. What a magical place. Let's begin with the next morning. Pokemon planned a bunch of cool stuff for the creators and partners they flew out, beginning with a group field trip to the Mega Tokyo Pokemon Center. Jacob and I woke up early for it and missed the bus they had for us. And it totally wasn't completely my fault entirely because I hypothetically didn't read the schedule correctly and was taking my sweet time getting ready. Why would you think that? So we had to take the trains on our own to get there. Anyone that remembers my first Japan trip knows the trains were me and my family's mortal enemy number one. We kept getting it wrong and it was failure after failure the entire trip. You'd think that with all that prior experience and struggle, I would have grown as a Japanese train understander, right? Nope, we got on the wrong train. But at least we were having a, a good time. <laughs> After a lot of freaking out and mental strain and regrets, we finally arrived at our destination. And although by the time we got there, they had already finished looking at the Pokemon Center, we were able to grab a quick snack with the group at the Pokemon Sweets Cafe. I meant to take a picture of the Pikachu waffle before I ate half its cranium, but I forgot. So this is what you get. Now that we were with the group, we were able to travel with them for the rest of the day. So we packed into the bus and headed off to a traditional tea ceremony where we were taught all about how the tea masters is the mic good tea now 
and tea etiquette and all these things about tripping? the significance of tea in Japanese culture, all while getting to taste the tea the tea master made. Again, I meant to take this picture before I took a chunk out of the little sweet they gave us, but here we are yet again. I'm just not that great at this. They also served us a really special okay. lunch of super fancy bento boxes. Right, like, right, so you. fancy that the host was like, dude, I've never even had these bento boxes before. I was super excited, but I don't mean to be ungrateful or wasteful, but the box was full of super fancy, complicated fish and seafood. I knew going to Japan, I'd have to be flexible with food because it's really hard to be vegan or even vegetarian there. So I really tried to eat as much as possible and look thankful. But yeah, I, I struggled a lot, but I still had a great time oh, and it was an honor. Vegan? We were dropped off at the Yokohama Chinatown and left to explore a bit until dinner in a few hours. Everyone separated into groups and Jacob, Stefan, so the I guy that seafood. sent me I all love the sitting seafood. cuties, you guys remember him. The guy named Steve and I went and pursued the street food a bit before stumbling into a little arcade with a bunch of crane machines. I got this silly little bear minifigure, his name is Chikoab, so I decided to innocently carry him around in my pocket for the entirety of the trip. You know, because he was silly. This single action that, severely that's, that's changed the course thing, of my bro. mental stability going forward. You don't give a fuck about You'll shit like that, bro. But look at these cute photos I got with him. We had a great dinner, headed back to the hotel, got to hang out with our good old Pokemon rival Jit. Or yawn a bit and called it a night. The next day we all got to do some private shopping at the Pokemon World's pop-up shop. I'll just say we bought way too much stuff that we also don't regret in the slightest. I even got this video of Jacob grabbing more and more sitting cuties as the workers kept reorganizing them to keep the display looking perfect. We walked out of there with three giant bags of stuff. But it's okay because remember we anticipated this with our extra suitcases which I am starting to wonder if they are going to be enough, but surely we will come down. We were then all taken to the creatures' offices. You know, just the place where they make Pokemon cards. It was gorgeous in there. They had these awesome sculptures of giant Pokemon cards with crystals, and all the walls were lined with 3D card art. It felt like I was in a building with a lot of significance. Be because I was. We got a tour around the building, met the TCG card testers, and were able to ask them questions about their process. Even got to have a little Q&A session with Atsushi Nagashima, the game director of the Pokemon TCG. Yes. It was funny, one of the people in our group asked how they chose which Pokemon to make cards for. It's a a good Pokemon question. Merch. And then followed it up with, I really like Mantyke, but Pokemon there's only two Mantyke cards that exist. And the assistant pulled up a list of all the Pokemon Mantyke cards that have ever been created. What and sure enough, there were only two. The director chuckled and was essentially like, yeah, sometimes Pokemon get lost in the cracks. We kind of just make cards of Pokemon I like. For example, my favorite Pokemon is Gengar. And you know what? That actually makes a lot of sense. Also, we were able to have a Q&A session with the Pokemon card art director and three artists who actually draw art for the cards. That was super interesting and I was so incredibly inspired by that discussion. But you know those Pokemon cards with the super cute clay art? That artist's name is Yuka Mori and she was in that panel. I was so starstruck. Those are some of my favorite Pokemon cards. And not only that, but she hosted a little workshop for us where she gave us clay and taught us how to make little clay magnemites like in this card here. Speaking of this card, she brought the actual original magnemite for us to see. That was by far the coolest thing that I've bro, ever got. That is fire, bro. Imagine stuff that you see on TV, you see on paper, you see on whatever, and then you get to see the actual figure like in real life, bro. I don't know, that's like kind of tough. You feel me? Yeah, that's, that's tough. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, that came out wrong short time. <laughs> I was like, what did you just say? Button to be a part of. We got to meet a piece of genuine history. I felt like I was meeting the president. Also, here's me and Jacob's Magnemites that we made. Day three of our little Pokemon field trip, and we were taken to another Pokemon Center. This time in Shibuya, which was also right across from a Nintendo store. It was like a bullet was shot through our credit card. What the fuck, Shibuya? Bro, so Shibuya is an actual place? Oh, that's crazy. Cause y'all remember um in uh is it Jujutsu Kaisen? Didn't didn't they had a place called Shibuya, Shibuya or something like that? Where this motherfucker blew it up. Like he blew he said he blew up Shibuya. It's an actual place in Japan. Oh, that's crazy, dog, man. That's fire. That's fire.
cards. In the shopping center, I saw a little gacha machine with little miniature Chikawa plushes. I was only interested in getting Chikawa, but I decided to test my luck anyway. And I got him first try! Now I had two of them. Yes, the original was still in my pocket. You can safely assume he is in my pocket for the entirety of this video. I've got pictures to prove it. Jacob snapped this awesome picture of the Chikawa brain rot taking over. When we were looking around in the Shonen Jump Shop, a little Japanese boy pointed at Jacob and went, Sanji-san, before his mother oh, quickly wow. yanked him away, and I still to this day laugh at that interaction. Four kids saw his first blonde guy in real life and immediately <laughs> thought it was Sanji. <laughs> Later that day, we also got That's to attend funny. the Pokemon Symphony, where a live orchestra played Pokemon songs, and it was absolutely incredible. Video game orchestras are so cool. It always tugs on my heartstrings to see video game music transformed into such a beautiful new art form. Highly recommend attending one if you have any favorite games or franchises. On to the first day of Worlds. It was exciting, people flooded into the venue, we watched the opening ceremony in the crowd. Just wow. This is the whole reason why we're here. We went back to shopping. Look at this cute little Chikawa book I found in a nearby bookstore. At this point, we were- Imagine I go to Japan and somebody see me and they're like, Nigga! <laughs> I would not know what to do, bro. I swear. I would just leave the scene and just go home, bro. That would be crazy as fuck, bro. We're absolutely pushing it in terms of luggage space, and we were day four into a two and a half week trip. Our shopping sprees until this point were very for real. Nah, for real. not frugal. So we cut our losses and bought two extra giant suitcases to fit everything better. Okay, we knew we were gonna need extra suitcases. Getting a few extra couldn't hurt. Look, the flights were paid for. We were still They're saving money at this point, I think. <laughs> That's my rationalization. I'm going with that. Also in the mall were tons of Pokemon monitors straight up playing the world championships. TCG, Pokemon Go, VGC. Japan treated worlds like it was the Super Bowl. And it was just so cool to see one of my main interests so culturally celebrated. People of all ages would stop by to watch for a bit before going back to their shopping. I can't explain it, but it just made me very happy. We even got to see Wolfie live on the monitors. How'd he do? Girl. Uh, he did great. Don't worry about it. Nothing happened. Look, we were just happy to see our friend on the Pokemon ball screen. Proud of you, Wolfie. You're so cool. The second day of Worlds was hype. So hype that we left Yokohama and flew to Osaka. I haven't mentioned it yet, but we actually got tickets to see the one and only Hatsune Miku live in concert. The real ones know how huge that is for me. I want to talk about how life-changing that was, but I'm going to make a whole separate video about that experience I'll be posting next. All I'm going to say is it was the best day of my entire life. By a lot. Subscribe now before you miss it. Just saying. I will mention we did have to take the train to get back. Yeah, subscribe now before you miss it. Don't, just saying. You know what I'm saying? When about do another video to her video, you better subscribe before you miss it. <laughs> just saying. Later that night and got super lost again. And we never get better at it. Don't expect anything to change in that regard. We did finally get back to Yokohama, crashed for the night, and had a nice slow morning as we got ready for finals later that day. <laughs> to any One Piece fans who are caught up, we were in Japan for THE One Piece anime episode. You know what I'm talking about. 1072. We were able to turn on our hotel TV and watch it live. And That's that was crazy. so cool. I don't talk about how much I love One Piece much, mainly because it doesn't really come up, but One Piece is peak, and it was an honor to be in Japan at such an iconic part of the manga and anime's history. Anyway, back to Pokemon, sorry about that. We were able to watch the final VGC match live, got to chat and eat dinner with Wolfie that's and tough. some other friends, had you a said, late night hangout with Yon yeah, again, and that was about it. Day 7 meant it was time to pack up all our stuff from the hotel, say goodbye to Pokemon and Yokohama, and head on over to the apartment we rented for the rest of our stay just outside of Tokyo. At this point, we had filled up all six suitcases and multiple backpacks. I didn't mention it, but Pokemon gave us a truckload of gifts that we genuinely genuinely had no idea what to do with. We're grateful nonetheless. Thank you, Pokemon. Psyduck. But yeah, the, the taxi ride was a bit awkward. So are you meeting up with some friends? 
No. After we got situated in the new place, we decided to look around the area and grab some lunch. And I gotta say, the little hole-in-the-wall restaurant Jacob found was some of the best ramen I've ever ever had bro, ever. They even surprised, made it vegetarian bro. for me, which was extremely kind of them. Food modifying is That's a bit fine. tricky in Japan compared to the States, so I was very, very thankful. And it was delicious. We then proceeded bro. to do absolutely nothing for- Ramen will never taste better, bro. If you don't go to Japan, bro. Or if you don't go to, you know, like Asian countries that makes ramen, you know, where they eat ramen, bro. Like, it would never taste the same, bro, if you don't go to those countries, bro. Because, nigga, what? Nigga. It's like saying, oh, I want to eat pizza. You go to Papa John's. But you go to Italy and eat pizza, bro, you're going to feel, you're going to know what it tastes like to eat pizza. I ain't been to Italy to eat pizza before. My woman asked, but, nigga, I, what? You go to other countries to try their food. Like, also, like, when I went to Turkey, eating Turkish food and shit, Turkish breakfast and all that stuff. And then trying that shit out here in the state, it is not the same, bro. It is not the same, bro. That's crazy. For the rest of the day because we were exhausted from the trip so far. I haven't mentioned absolutely everything we'd been doing on the trip because it would be a lot of, first we did this and it was cool. Then we did this and it was cool. Even though it was such a pleasure to be invited, I was so dead and definitely this looked super not approachable or friendly to the rest of the group by the end of it. Sorry, guys. But neither time nor Japan stops for anyone, so we had to keep on chugging along. There were a bunch of friends we wanted to see while in Japan, and one of them was Connor. He wanted to take us to what he deemed his favorite Italian place ever. I asked if it was like, fancy Italian, to which I was given the answer of no. So we got there having a great time, and suddenly we realized Junichi Masuda, the director of Game Freak, is there having dinner. Not a fancy dinner, my ass! I then looked down <laughs> to see the Freddy Fazbear FNAF t-shirt that I am wearing. Not the best Jane moment to exist, but hey, what can you do? The food was phenomenal, though. I already mentioned the best ramen I've ever had while on the trip, but this was genuinely the best pasta I've ever had in my entire mm, life. Maybe even a top three meals ever for me. I don't know what the other two would be, but that Connor place is definitely up there. The next day, we went to the One Piece store in Shibuya and bought a lot of stuff because there was a lot of topical and hype things in there as you could imagine if you don't get it go catch up and come back don't worry it won't take too long my favorite character is mihawk but out of all the stuff the store had to offer there were only a few stickers and a single keychain for mihawk i'm still mauling about that one i just want more mihawk is that too much to ask for <laughs> even this guy got better merch the world's greatest swordsman deserves better yeah, let me get that i guess Asian, i'll just bro. take my zoro and law stuff that's cool too i suppose i also found a bunch so of she, not Asian. No. she is Asian. She is Asian. Right? I, I, she is Asian. What the fuck? What do I mean, right? She is Asian. I, th I think she said she's uh, Japanese as well. Or like, I don't know, Korean? I don't even remember a kitty land store and this is truly when you get to see where things start going downhill for me i just like the funny little cartoon bear thing what is that such a crime i don't remember what we did the rest of the day i think we just crashed and passed out this trip as surreal as it's been so far has been absolutely taking a toll on me and i desperately needed to just not move or talk or exist for a bit we were doing so many different things that were all awesome and hanging out with so many different people that were all awesome but man i am not built for extended periods of that much excitement and socializing. As much as I would like to change this fact, I'm also not a very active person. I know, I know. Up until this trip, I was practically sitting down 24-7, working all the time to prep as much work as possible so I could have a guilt-free three weeks off, and my muscles were definitely starting to decay at that point. I looked at my phone's step meter thing, and there was one day where I literally got 300 steps. That's pathetic. And suddenly, I'm logging over 20,000 daily. My body was screaming. What the hell are you doing out there? Please stop. Plus, we were in Japan during the hottest, most humid time of the year. Every time we left the air-conditioned luxury of a building, we would immediately be drenched in sweat. Look, I'm used to the heat. I grew up in Arizona, but even this was too much. So yeah, crash and burn it was. Tokyo Disneyland. 
was a bit underwhelming. It felt like a slightly worse version of the one in California because of the oddly spaced layout and surprisingly empty vibe. We did go to a Stitch themed show thing and as we were walking in, a worker stopped us and said, oh, excuse me, Stitch only speaks Japanese, like warning us it's not super tourist friendly. But I just think the mm. statement of Stitch only speaks Japanese is hilarious. We went in anyway and yep, Stitch only spoke Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, overall it was not the best thing we did, but apparently, I didn't know this, Japan has two Disneys, Disneyland and Disney Sea. And we went to land, which is unanimously deemed the worst of the two. So, oops, better luck next time. Jacob and I took Last two game. more rest days where we just turned to ash. Then up and at him, back to Osaka we go. This time, we went to an Eve concert. Besides Hatsune Miku, the Japanese band Eve is the only other concert I've said I wanted to go see. I love their music videos they have for all their songs. It's always such beautiful animation. And by the way, they're the ones who sang the season one Jujutsu Kaisen anime my opening theme if you're lost. Earlier in the trip, Jacob just so happened to look up if they were doing a concert while we were there, and lo and behold, they were. He got some totally not scalped tickets, which turned out to be a super complicated process, so thank you, Jacob. You're the bestest friend I've ever had. Thank you for going through the trenches for a silly Showtime, old me. Anyway, Korean the concert in the chat, was so you know incredible. We don't speak Korean, the atmosphere we don't understand was fantastic. They had Koreans, awesome visual effects going it. on. The glow bands a lot of people bought were perfectly synced to the music and colors on the stage, which really enhanced the experience. The music was great, which, I mean, of course it was. That was the whole reason we went in the first place. I talk about it more in the upcoming Miku video, but Japanese encores are so much different no, from no the American Pokemon ones. Super, They're so great. quiet and polite. There is pretty much no screaming and cheering. It was just a long applause with a semi-whisper chant of Ancore! Ancore! And they also made us wait like five minutes for them to come back out. My hands were getting itchy just from clapping so much, that's how long it took. And then when they finally came out, they ended up doing like five extra songs. I mean, I'm not complaining, but after the fourth time thinking, man, that was a great last extra song. Well, time to head home. Wait, another? It starts getting a bit comedic. This is just a side tangent, but Jacob went off to use the bathroom before the show started and came back 10 minutes later like, dude, this is crazy, but it took me a bit longer to find a bathroom because there were so many extra women's bathrooms, That's which is like, crazy. Whoa, that's actually so smart. There's always such a huge line for the women's bathroom compared to the men's in any scenario. I was just shocked mm. Japan was like, okay, then we'll make more women's bathrooms to fix that problem. Like it was that's so fine. simple. I know in that's America dope. it would probably turn into a stupid political thing, Hell but it yeah. made me so happy Japan just implemented such an obvious and straightforward solution so like easily if, if, for if, the gals. The next day we headed over. Like if you have like a, like a concert going on, you know what I'm saying? You know most of the time, the most people that show up to these places is mostly women compared to men. You know what I'm saying? Like, shit. Why the fuck would you not have more women's bathroom? Like, if it's going to be a whole bunch of women in that bitch and it's just few dudes out that motherfucker, like, shit. We need more women's bathroom. Before men and women start sharing one, it's crazy to Universal, which was hands down the best amusement park I've ever been to. So they can do amusement parks well. First of all, Universal Japan is way more anime and manga focused than the ones in the States, which made it instantly more engaging for me. Jacob and I both agreed we would window shop for the first part of the day and then buy all the things we wanted as we were leaving so we wouldn't have to lug around a bunch of bags all day. But we immediately saw a little one piece shop and cracked. We just <laughs> wanted to wear these one piece <laughs> headbands. That's rule breaking worthy. We also mm. got some towels because surprise, 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 it was freaking hot. I know I've been complaining about the weather here and there, but my lord, it was miserably scorching. Japan has <laughs> such a big culture around staying cool while outside, and I totally get it now. People would be walking around with little fans, ice packs, towels. A lot of women had parasols. I'll say, if we didn't get those That's towels, great. we probably could have passed out from heat stroke that day. Later on, I even ended up getting another towel. It was a cute Pikachu one, but I got it mainly because it was oh, a close design. Fine. After That's soaking fine. that thing in cold water and putting it on, my body temperature instantly lowered like five degrees. However, that meant I was walking around the park looking like this. 
Back to the <laughs> awesome <laughs> stuff. Like we did a bunch of attractions <laughs> like watch a fun 4D Jujutsu Kaisen show where the seats move around, went on a super cool 3D VR Spider-Man ride. We tried to cool down by going on a Minions thing called Freeze uh. Ray Sliders that claimed to cool riders down with a blast of chilled mist from a giant freeze ray. But we got on and absolutely did not even touch a drop of the mist because it never and Slows that I need my home bathroom. You don't want to go in after me. Nah, but it's clear. We, we understand. We understand. Because once we go in that motherfucker, yeah, we're going to fuck around and die. We're going to fuck around and die in that bitch. They said, fishes are always wet. Hey, yo, back up. No, they're not. They're only wet when they're in the water. What you talking about? They're not wet when they get out the water. You get what I'm saying? Because something is not wet. If there's no water touching it. Hey, yo, that shit kind of sounds sad, bro. But let's get back to the video. <clears throat> but you get what I'm saying. Ended up getting in range of our cart. That felt like an actual Man, tragedy in the water, at the bitch. time. <laughs> there were a few big roller coasters we wanted to go yeah, when on. They in the but water, I then you super went. motion sick and forgot to bring nausea medicine. So no roller coasters for us. But I shall return one day. The park, of course, had a bunch of cool themed restaurants, one of them being a super cool One Piece restaurant. Did I mention I like One Piece? There also was a special Sanji one, but we know you needed a reservation, so fooey. It was awesome though, I love One Piece. After a few hours of rides and being broiled alive, we decided to fully cool off by going on the Jurassic Park ride that's just giant splash mountain with dinosaurs. We cooked in line for probably a solid hour, and that's as great. soon as we were literally stepping foot inside the ride, it started pouring rain. Now that's, that's just great. not fair. I don't even understand how that happened, but whatever we started buying all the stuff we window shopped for as we waited for the one piece live show to begin again please refrain from judging i am being vulnerable and open here by the way as we were walking around we stumbled onto a little mario themed show just out in a courtyard area they played some fun little custom songs and had all these dancers alongside the mascots and then out of nowhere they started absolutely blasting the crowd with like gallons of water i didn't That's even see great. it coming it was like firefighters showed up to play out a giant fire except the fire was a bunch of japanese people the time came and we got to <laughs> file in for the special one piece live show and even though jacob and i didn't understand a single part of it because it was all in japanese it was awesome and the costume design was phenomenal it was a bit unfortunate though because the seats were all in like a half circle formation around the stage as much as they tried to make the show enjoyable from all angles it was pretty hard to see the main things going on in the center my only true complaint though is that that Zoro didn't come to our side at all. All the other Damn. characters rotated around so we could see them, but Zoro only did it at the very end to take a bow. Also, Mihawk being included would have been nice, but it's okay. By the time we got to enter Nintendo Land, it was That's like fine. 9 p.m. We got up at 6 a.m., by the way, so we pretty much just rode the Yoshi's Island ride they don't have in the States and headed home because that's all the energy we had left. But even just seeing that, it was miles better than the one in the States. Also, we picked up a little dinner at the 7-Eleven near our hotel 7-eleven is actually awesome in japan by the way and they had a few little chico plushy keychains and i bought them just being transparent here we woke up early the next morning to catch our flight back to imagine 7-eleven being better in a whole totally di different country that didn't even create 7-eleven that's crazy bro but nah you know what it is crazy bro because when i went to paris dog bro the chipotle in paris bro what the absolutely fuckery, bro? That shit hit different. Like, bro, fresh, organic, smooth, clean, tasty. I'm like, bro, why does everything taste so different compared to what we eat in America, bro? It's, and I realized because, like, in Europe in general, you know, like, the Europeans, like, there's some things that they don't even allow into their country. You know what I'm saying? Like, into, like, all the countries in Europe. You feel me? So it's like, when you when, when, like that's why some of their food some of their snacks taste different and taste even more better than what we eat here here yeah, in america bro most shit we eat here is just chemical bro shit that has so many shit in it he said i've never been to chipotle here you live in paris or you don't live in paris so what you mean you never been to chipotle here where 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 where, where is here you you live oh you never been to chipotle in the u.s 
Well, you need to try it one time. And whenever you get the opportunity to travel to the to Paris, bro, try Chipotle out there, bro. Like, it is... Bro, I ate that shit, bro, and that shit felt like I was eating food from home, bro. I, it was crazy. It was crazy. To Tokyo and hurried over to the Kirby Cafe. Emily actually booked the reservation for us. It's she was meant to, to also be there and gave them to us as a gift. Emily, I will always be indebted to you for your sacrifice. The cafe itself was so well decorated with all these little Kirby things and the menu was adorable. I got the star curry and a magical little fruity drink with a Kirby marshmallow that triggered my cute aggression. Jacob got the pizza and a Kirby burger, but since he made modifications, the staff asked him to not post a picture of the burger to the public. Like, they didn't know he was a content creator or anything, I guess they just didn't want the public to see a naked Kirby burger. We also so both got desserts. I already decided I was gonna consume the Carby. The presentation was beautiful. It was literal art on a plate. Taste-wise, it was decent. The body was some sort of gelatin, which I wasn't too crazy about, but the rest was super tasty. I did my best, but he ended up looking like he was in a horrific accident when I threw in the towel. The cafe also has a special little private store connected to it, and yeah, what you expect happened definitely happened. We we left with full bellies and bags, continued to look around the shopping center the cafe was connected to, and ended up walking into a gotcha store. I am about to be very store? vulnerable with you here. This is one of the lowest points of my entire life. Please <laughs> don't think too much less of me after what happened in that gotcha store. So I walk in, spot Chikawa, Beeline it to the machine, obviously. Like I mentioned before, I'm only interested in Chikawa, so I was only playing for him. But by the cursed luck of the gacha gods, I just could not get him. I was going back and forth between the machine and the coin exchange, getting multiples Damn. of every other little guy, but no Chikawa. I could feel the workers glances at me, probably because the desk they were standing behind was right next to the machine I was grinding. But after <laughs> way too much money, he dropped. I got my well-earned, Horribly priced at that point, Chikawa. I then started looking at all the other machines, putting some <laughs> coins in a few here and there, until so I stopped at one bro. that had a line of animals playing band instruments. They were yeah. very silly, but there was a little pigeon holding up symbols, and I really wanted to get him for Jordan and Kelsey. In went the coins. Tiger, elephant, fox, it was happening again. Everything except the one I wanted. Which I know more or less that's the luck with gotchas, but it was getting to the point where I was getting surprised the pigeon was <laughs> dodging me as much as it was. Surely the next one. What? Eventually, I had to go back to the coin exchange, and as oh, I was pigeon. about to put in more money, I saw out of the corner of my eye one of the workers peek out and take a look in horror at all the gotcha pawns that were sitting at the top of my bag. They then raised up their hand and said something in Japanese while shaking their head. And I knew in my heart, I was being cut off. No, please, I, I can stop whenever, just a few more hits and I I'm done. The pigeon is next, I can, I can feel it. Why, why do you look afraid? What's under the desk? I got kicked out of a gotcha store. I that had hit crazy. an all-time low. I told my friends, and they said they probably just thought I was gonna try and resell them, bag, but I don't even know if that would even make it sound better, knowing I was getting so many that they thought I was robbing them blind. I just wanted my little chikawa and pigeon with symbols. We made dinner plans that night with a friend, and we were just about to grab a taxi and head back to freshen up, but Jacob and I caught sight of a fun anime and goodies oh shop. Oh my god, bro. Who do we think we are? <laughs> People with self-control? No, definitely. We'll make it quick. We rushed in make and split up for optimization. <laughs> As I was looking around, I saw it. A whole section dedicated to Chikawa. It was like someone put a freshly baked pie on a windowsill, and I was suddenly floating over to it. My eyes were zoned in, making sure I saw every single thing possible, putting Chikawa after Chikawa in the basket. Jacob eventually came over and showed me a picture he took on his phone. In my tunnel vision, all my eyes registered was that the picture showed more Chikawa in the store. <laughs> I immediately went feral. Where? Jacob's eyebrows went up in surprise and maybe a bit of fear. And as I looked at the photo again, I realized Jacob wasn't showing me a picture of a different Chikawa section. 
he was showing me a picture of me at the current Chikawa section I was standing in because he thought it was funny. And in my Chikawa brain rot, I didn't even register I was in the picture. I just saw more Chikawa and went obsessive. That's crazy. This is how I am. Either stand by me or leave. No, I don't need an intervention. No Put it away. Yeah, we left. That's crazy. I looked longingly at the crane machine Chikawas we didn't have time for, and we made it in time for dinner. Plus, we ended up in another arcade nearby anyway, and I got myself a Chikawa from one of those <laughs> machines. So it all worked out. What Top, is it with I don't these hear it. Finally, bro. we were reaching the end of our trip. We spent the last day grabbing lunch with Emily and Didus. There was a cool One Piece scavenger hunt event going on, so we also did that with them. We basically had to walk around Shibuya and find special One Piece trading card posters hidden around the area. And if we found enough along with the special card of the day, we could get a limited edition mystery card. It was fun, but also hot and all my clothes were sticking to my body. Didus generously let me borrow his umbrella and I jumped for joy as he showed me it was coincidentally Chikawa themed. <laughs> I, I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't all know, I know what is that this Chikawa shit, We spent a few hours completing the scavenger hunt, the got our special cards and bid them farewell. Always good to see you guys. Bye bye. I accidentally stole Didus' umbrella. It looked so calculated. <laughs> they knew how much I was obsessed with Chikawa. They've been watching my Instagram stories. Follow if you want to see brain rot in real time. Emily, I have the Chikawa <laughs> umbrella. I didn't mean to steal it, I promise. It's not what it looks like. Oh, Since man. we were leaving in the morning and wouldn't be seeing them again, they just let me keep it. But the side eye Jacob gave me the rest of the way back. <laughs> I didn't mean to stop it. <laughs> Getting back to the apartment, reality hit us hard. We needed a bag. just a few more suitcases. More suitcases. Yeah, like, <laughs> like I do it. <laughs> Cause I'm over there thinking, like, bro, you buying all of this stuff. Where is you gonna put this? Like, what is your deal? <laughs> All the Chico A, Chico B, Chico C that you buy it everywhere. Like, what is your deal, girl? That's crazy, bro. Now you stuck. Again. In total, we ended up buying six extra suitcases to hold everything we collectively bought. And even then, it was a struggle making it fit. Jacob ended up going professional Tetris mode, perfectly fitting everything into the suitcases with quite literally no extra room to spare. We came to Japan each with a backpack, carry-on, and one extra big suitcase. And we're leaving with, all together, eight suitcases and four backpacks. We were lucky the taxi driver had a big enough car to fit everything because we didn't have much of a game plan if it didn't. Off That's to the airport great. we went where we checked all of our excessive bags, paid a couple fees, boarded our flight, and headed home. That trip will go down as one of the best trips I've ever gone on. It felt like it turned into a celebration of everything that makes me me. All of my hobbies and interests, Pokemon, One Piece, at the last minute Chikawa. We got to do so many incredible things and were given so many opportunities I'd never even thought I could be a part of. I got to see so many friends that are normally so far away, ate some of the best meals of my life, and overall was just really happy. Especially That's getting great. to spend it all with my best friend Jacob. By the way, if you wanted to know hey, why Rack, in the, the world cap. we got so late. many things, yes, a lot of it was for us. 90% of it all was for our friends. 100% of the Chico stuff was mine, but that's besides the point. If you want to <laughs> see what we got them, the also credit where credit is due, the majority of it all was from Jacob because he's a great gift giver and even oh, more nice. incredible friend to the people around him. We're all nothing short of lucky to be able to call him our friend. You can go watch his Japan video. I assume it's already up because we had to animate a freaking 30 minute long video. My god, it was a lot. Thanks for sticking around but yeah i just had an unforgettable trip and i owe the opportunity to the pokemon company for inviting us to japan in the first place That's i'm dope. extremely lucky to be in the position i am and will be forever grateful oh that is dope now nah, that was a great story though that was a very interesting story all i know is the story was full of obsessions bro <laughs> they put them off and said bro i am not going to japan without knowing that i felt like i went to japan bro i am not going there without feeling like i went to japan it's like they want to buy the whole goddamn japan bro that's crazy dog
that is wild bro oh my god but hey that's it for this video if you enjoyed this video man drop a like drop a comment let me know in the comment section i appreciate it man and thank y'all for tuning in come join this the twitch pull up on us we're lit vibing dog thank y'all for tuning in we out on that one dog peace